In this video, I'm going to continue with this idea of using distributive properties to solve algebra equations, and in particular the linear equations. Now, not all four of these uh, these kind of procedures will you have to follow. For instance, in this one, there are no parentheses or brackets to get rid of, so we just stop and we take a look at number two. Number two says combine like terms, and we're just going to do that on each side. And well, that's already done. So really, step three is to move all variable terms to one side and all constant terms to the other. And we use addition and subtraction to do that. But we have fractions. And for most people, fractions are very scary things. And so it would be very, very handy if we could get rid of the fractions. And so we're going to go ahead and work on something that it, most books refer to as clearing the fractions. Meaning we're just going to get rid of them and they're ma going to magically go poof. And we don't have to worry about them. And life is good. Okay, so they don't really go poof, but still. Uh, we are going to go ahead and we are going to eliminate the fractions called clearing the fractions. Clearing fractions. By the way, you can only do this with equations. You can't actually do this when you're dealing with fractions on as expressions. For instance, if you covered up the right side and you said, well, I have um, 2 thirds x minus 1 half x, and I wanted to combine like terms, I couldn't actually eliminate my fractions that way. Uh, so you, you kind of have to have the equal sign. How do we clear fractions? We multiply. both sides by the least common multiple of all the denominators. So in our example here, we have denominators of 2, 3, 4, and 6. And we want to find the least common multiple of all of those. Now, your, if you have a TI uh, 83 or 84 or higher, uh, your, your calculator can find the least common multiple of at least two numbers. But to find the multiples of three and four numbers requires nested uh, least common multiple operators. Or we just say forget it, let's do it the hard way. Okay, here's the hard way. Take multiples of 6, since 6 is our largest number. So we want to find multiples of 6. And we want to ask ourselves, does 2 go into 6? Well, yes, it does. OK, so so far, 2 and 6 have a common multiple of 6. Does 3 go into 6? Well, yes, it does. So we're good that way. But does 4 go into 6? Mm, no, it does not. And so we go to the next multiple of 6, and we keep asking ourselves these questions. Does 2 go into 12? Yes, it does. Does 3 go into 12? Yes, it does. It's 4. Does 4 go into 12? It does. It's 3. And does 6 go into 12? Yes, it does. It's 2. So 12 is our least common multiple. Therefore, we are going to multiply both sides by the number 12. And we are going to do this through the distributive property. So I'm going to circle my 12 and I'm going to simply distribute it using multiplication to each term. I'm going to go ahead and put the answer in a light blue. So now what I do is I say 12 times 2 thirds. That's, that's awful. Well, in my head I really have 12 times 2 divided by 3. That's what I have. Now, we can rewrite this as 12 times 2 divided by 3 and lose the parentheses. But in this next step, we kind of have to be a little careful. And I think I believe I have another video that explains why you can do this. Basically, if you divide by 3, that's the same as multiplying by 1 third. And so we could move this around and say, oh, well, we could do that first. Yeah, 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 we could do that first. But then we could change multiplying by 1 third back into dividing by 3. The effect is this. 
take this divided by 3, put that right there. So we have 12 divided by 3 times 2. Now if we do this first, we work with tiny numbers and life is good. 12 divided by 3 is 4 times 2 is 8. That means that 12 divided by 3 is 4 times 2 is 8. This becomes 8x. So 2 thirds of 12 is 8. And you just do this for all of them. So we say we have a minus here. We're going to drop down that minus sign. 12 divided by 2 is 6 times 1 is 6. So that becomes 6 equals 12 divided by 6 is 2 times 1 is 2. Bring down the plus. 12 divided by 4 is 3 times 3 is 9. Becomes 9x. And oh look, we have no more fractions. No more fractions is a good thing. So now we just go ahead and we follow step 3, and I'm going to do that in green. We follow step 3 that says use addition and subtraction to move everything around. I'm going to choose to subtract 8x from both sides because I will have a positive value of x. Because my 8x is being eliminated from the left side, all of my numbers are going to go to the left side, which means I have to subtract 2 as well those eliminate. I'm left with negative 6 minus 2 is a negative 8 is equal to 9x minus 8x gives me 1x which is just x. And there's my answer. And I never had to touch a fraction. But maybe you're saying, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait. How do we know that's true? What if you did it by fractions and you didn't want to go that route? Okay, well let's go ahead and redo the problem. Now, I'm going to do this next part rather quickly, so if you're not that uh, confident in fractions, addition and subtraction, then you're going to have to probably pause it and just kind of do some steps on your own and then come back and see what I've got. But if we did this right, if our clearing fractions works, then we can just go ahead and we can do this in fraction form and get the same answer. So I'm going to simply subtract 2 thirds x from both sides. But in order to subtract, I'm going to subtract 1 6 from both sides. That goes away, that goes away, and I'm left with, ooh, I have negative 1 half minus 1 6 on the left. On the right, I have 3 quarters x minus 2 thirds x. At this point, I've got to get a common denominator. Common denominator 2 and 6 is 6. So this is going to be negative 3 sixths minus 1 sixth equals the common denominator of 4 and 3 is 12. So this is going to be 9 over 12x minus 8 over 12x. This is going to give me negative 4 sixths is equal to 1 twelfth x. If I go through and I reduce on the left, you can see this is just awful, isn't it? I go through and reduce on the left and I get negative 2 thirds equals 1 twelfth x. Well, there are a couple ways we could do this, but because it's already being multiplied, I'm going to divide it by 1 twelfth. Whoa, 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 got to be careful. Got to be careful. 1 twelfth. Any number divided by itself is 1, I'm left with x. However, when you, when you divide two fractions, you have to flip the bottom one and multiply it. So we have negative 2 thirds times 12 over 1. Well, this reduces to 4, and that reduces to 1. Negative 2 times 4 is a negative 8. 1 times 1 is 1 equals x. This is just negative 8. And so we get negative 8 equals x. Man, look at all that work. Wow. That's dealing with fractions. And I did that fairly quickly, I thought. Or we could just clear fractions and bang, and we're home free. Life is good. So clearing fractions is a very, very good uh, procedure to use while you're going, or at least a method of solution, while you're going through this distributed process, property process. 
All right, so you can do this also because decimals are considered fractions with denominators of 10 or multiple or, or powers of 10. You can do this with decimals as well to clear decimals. Very often people just use the calculator once they're dealing in decimals, however.